presented by Church Tech U. It's the ProPresenter Show. On today's show, the difference between the ProPresenter 6 and ProPresenter 7 user interface. Hi, and welcome again to the ProPresenter Show. This is the show where, of course, I teach you all about ProPresenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've been confused about the differences between the two files, go ahead, give me a thumbs up, and also like and subscribe while you're at it. So, this was one of those things that when ProPresenter 7 came out, actually before it came out because I was a beta tester, um, initially some of the things confused me a bit. So, I thought that we would just go back and forth. This is probably only helpful if you've used ProPresenter 6, although 5 was very similar. Uh, ProPresenter 3 more similar to 5 than 4 was, etc. But, we're going to hop over onto my computer, and I'm going to do a big no-no. I've got both ProPresenter 6 and ProPresenter 7 open at the exact same time. Do not recommend you do this, but then again, you're not doing a tutorial for people to learn the differences between the two. That's why I'm doing it. So let's head over to my computer, and uh, we will take a look. So here we are in Pro 7, and if you've use this for very long you're very familiar with it uh, of course you won't have a thumbnail of me down here that, that would be the difference between yours and mine but let's head over to ProPresenter 6 which I have hiding down here well hello old friend there is ProPresenter 6 so uh, the first thing let me just uh, kind of drag these next to one another and we'll start on the left and then proceed over to the right so the first thing you see is this preview window is no longer here as it was in Pro 6. Up here we have a choice between libraries. There's actually multiple that you can have in uh, ProPresenter 7 and playlists right here. In Pro 6, the library search was down here and doing a search on that would also search in Song Select. Your playlists were further on down. You could uh, collapse this, by the way, but uh, your playlists were further on down, and this was basically your single library, and then you could have folders in uh, that, and then off to the right, we'd actually have our playlist. Here in ProPresenter 7, it's all different your libraries are up here, your playlists are here, depending on which you choose is what populates right here. So if I choose my sermons library, then that's the contents of my sermons library. If I choose this playlist, this is the contents of that particular playlist. That might be something that uh, gets you on occasion, so just pay attention to that. The next thing that I want to point out is over here in uh, Pro 6, your search was always open, always available, unless you minimized it. Well, here in Pro 7, it's not, but you can get to it just by clicking on um, your search right here. And then that brings that up. And notice that I clicked on this. This only searches within ProPresenter. Having the search search within both ProPresenter and Song Select at the same time could be a little confusing, and quite frankly, there was no reason for us to hit the Song Select servers every single time that you did a search if you didn't mean to. So that's uh, something that's different. Now this is basically the only floating uh, window that exists in ProPresenter 7. And so wherever you put that, when you click on something else, it goes away. When you come back, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command-F, to find it. I think it's Control-F for Windows. Then it pops up in the exact same place wherever you left it. So that's a difference. Notice that we have uh, our library search, and that searches across libraries. So it will show you everything in all libraries, so you don't have to worry about that. But off to the right here, 
and we can stretch this out so that it's a little more obvious. So notice how I've got two versions of uh, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, one in Contemporary and one in Hymns. I might have those formatted somewhat differently depending on the service that I was doing, so that would be helpful to me to know which library that was in. Now, instead of finding it in the library, and then dragging it down here to the playlist down here, you can do the exact same thing. Just bring up search, find it in the library, and drag it over to the playlist. That's probably the best way to do that, uh, is just to drag it there and not worry about it. Uh, we can collapse this, by the way, and once you've made everything, that's probably what I would do. Uh, and, you know, personally I wouldn't do it, but, you know, if I had someone that was running it that didn't know as much about ProPresenter, then that's absolutely uh, what I would do there. So that's a difference. Notice uh, your media layer is down here. It's not offset like it was in uh, ProPresenter 6, where basically we've got the video image bin. And we only have the background and foreground. Those you can't get rid of. It's only background or only foreground. We could have groups. We could have uh, playlists within the groups. And then we could have tags. But in Pro 7, they have collapsed all that into just playlists. And in a future tutorial, I'll tell you why they're called playlists. Because almost no one uses them that way. But there's some real power there if you do want to do that. Uh, we also have a video input down here underneath this. Um, and what's helpful for that is ProPresenter 7 can live stream, so you can switch between multiple cameras. There, It was possible to kind of do here in ProPresenter 6, but it, I just told people never to do that because it just wasn't really built for that. So that's uh, a way that that's different. Here we've got very similar stuff here in the middle where we're interacting with the slides layer. Um, we have the audio bin here on the right hand uh, side. You could make that go away by clicking on the audio button. So a lot of people did that if they weren't using it. Um, and the video image bin um, same thing there. You could hide that as well if you wanted to. So that's some of the main differences. But here in Pro 6, I can actually uh, change where these icons are and just put in what I want. That's gone in Pro 7. And uh, quite frankly, some people don't like that. I don't see a problem with it whatsoever because these are the things you're going to use the vast majority of the time. Um, your clear buttons are way over here instead of over here, and it's helpful that they're here because they're in layer order, starting with the live video, then the media, then the slides, then the new announcements layer, etc. So that's helpful. The other layers, you can interact with them down here. So they don't need to be up there either. And they don't float. So um, if I were to go to the stage screen, or I were to go to timers, or messages, or props, it's all right there. It's always right there. It's never covering up other stuff in the UI. So I really think that that's a vast improvement. Um, all in all, most of these are improvements, um, although maybe I'm saying that because I'm used to Pro 7 now. Uh, at first it was shocking, I will admit that, but I think that moving things the way that they've done, it is in general a positive change. Um, one other thing that you may not know about ProPresenter 7 if you're coming from ProPresenter 6 is in Pro 6, 
there were uh, a few different modules that you had to pay extra for, and that's gone in Pro 7. All the functionality of all those modules is now in Pro 7 as of uh, the, the last function was added very recently as I'm recording this, um, just in the last few months. But those are all there. Um, one other thing that's different between Pro 6 and Pro 7, if you go into Bibles here, that is a specific mode. So it doesn't float, uh, unlike it did over here in uh, Pro 6, where if I can, I don't think I have that. Uh, was it Control B? Yeah. So this is the way that you could have it, which looks very similar, but you also had this button here where you could have it detach. And some people like that. I don't see... Um, I can think of one and only one instance where that might be helpful. And so if that's something that really matters to you, then by all means reach out to Renewed Vision and ask them for that if that's something that you really need. So that's basically the differences between the UI of ProPresenter 6 and our new friend ProPresenter 7. If you like this content, you'd probably like my Pro 7 Quick Start course. So head on over to tdm.fyi slash Pro 7 Quick. Give me your name and email address so that I can send you a login. And then you can take that at your leisure. Um, I should mention that I have just updated it with uh, four hours of new video all about the basics of ProPresenter 7. So if you haven't gone through that, you absolutely want to. I updated it for ProPresenter 7.8, so it's got a lot of new content that it didn't have before. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.